Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Tibbetts Physics. What is crappening? Today we're starting a new unit, and it's an introduction of energy, and we'll look at work and power today. We're very familiar with energy. It's all around us. We get energy from the sun. We get it from the food we eat. We get it from electrical energy. Today, we're going to look at mechanical energy, which is slightly different than what you've learned in chemistry. Now, before we get to energy, which we're really concerned about the transfer of energy, what we want to look at first is work. So let's define mechanical energy first. For physics, this is the last unit on mechanics, and we're finally going to after this, we'll move to electricity, waves, sound, and modern physics. So mechanical energy is energy. Sorry for using the word in its definition. Energy that is associated with the position of an object. or the motion of an object. For this class, we're going to look at a variety of types of energy. So we'll just look at them right now and go in more details in later lessons. Types of energy. We're first going to look at uh, potential energy. And for potential, we have both gravitational and elastic. Uh, and then we'll look at kinetic energy, which is energy in motion. And we'll also add in internal energy. Which is energy that's transferred to heat due to friction. Once we get through all these, we'll combine them all to look at conservation of energy and analyze problems that involve that. So, let's get into work. Now, New Year's just passed us, or maybe it's approaching us, depending on what time you watch this video. And everybody's talking about going to the gym and working out uh, to get in shape for their New Year's resolution. But the question is, is are they really working out? So how do we define work in terms of physics? In the real world, we know that you go to work, you have a job, you work out. So work is used in different ways, uh, and it's also used in a different way for physics. <clears throat> in the previous unit, impulse and momentum, we looked at impulse, and that's how long you apply a force on an object, which was force times time. Work is very similar, except instead of how long do you apply a force on an object, it's how far do you apply a force on an object. So work is done when a force is applied on an object. Oops, not is uh, applied. Is applied on an object. <clears throat> and the object moves a distance in which, or sorry, in the direction of the force. We'll talk about what that means later, in a few minutes actually. In the direction of the force. So if we were to define work for its formula, we would be left with work oops, is equal to force times displacement. Or W is equal to FD. Now we have force, we know force is a vector, and displacement is also a vector, but in physics you can't have 
a vector does not equal a vector times a vector. So work is actually a scalar quantity. <clears throat> and its units has special units. Its units are newtons times meters, which is equal to a joule. You're probably familiar with that from chemistry. And a joule is also a capital J. Now, it's very important that the direction of the force is applied, or sorry, the direction of the force is applied to the object is also the direction of motion of the object. So, for instance, imagine that you're at the gym and you are lifting a, let's say I'm lifting a 500 kilogram weight. Kind of light for me, but uh, we'll just go with that. So if I take a 500 kilogram weight and I lift it up from the floor, my force is upwards. In this case, I'm doing a force against gravity. So a quick side note, I guess we'll call it a tidbit tidbit. <laughs> direction of the force is upward and you're lifting an object at a constant velocity moves at a constant V then the force <clears throat> to lift the object is a force of gravity. So force to lift equals Fg. So if you know the mass of the object, we could say that work is equal to Fg times how high you lift it. And Fg from before is Mg. So work could also equal Mg. Okay, anyways, so I lift that object upwards. I'm applying an upward force, and the object is moving up, so we're doing positive work on it. Now, let's say I lift that object upwards, and then all of a sudden I see a cute girl in the corner, probably her first and last day at the gym, no offense, and I want to impress her, so I walk over towards her with my 500 kilogram mass. <clears throat> so as I'm walking forward, I'm applying a distance forward. So here's me going to the right. And to hold this object, this 500 kilogram object, I'm applying an upward force. So my force is upwards and I'm moving to the right. That means there's no work being done. So the force and the distance must be in the same direction. That's important to remember. Okay, so force and distance must be in the same direction. Now, let's say I'm also doing some more workouts at the gym, and there's a wall right here, and I'm just pressing against this wall for a good 20 minutes. And I'm pressing as hard as I can, and I start building up a sweat, and my arms probably get shaky. So it looks like I'm working out. But in terms of physics, am I working out? Well, I'm applying a force against the wall. And we know the wall is also applying a force against me, due to Newton's third law. That wall is not moving. So if I'm, the question is, am I doing work on the wall? And the answer is no, because the wall does not move a distance. And one final quick example. Let's say I've got my 500 kilogram mass. And I apply a force to lift this mass up. So I'm applying a force upward and the object is moving upward. So I'm doing positive work on it. Now what about gravity? Earth is also pulling down on this object. So the object is moving up, but Earth is pulling it down. So that would be negative work. So the work of me to lift it up is positive. The 
work of Earth to lift while I lift it up is negative. Now, what about when I'm setting it down? Let's do a different color so we can differentiate the two. When I'm setting it down, if you think about it, I'm resisting uh, the acceleration or the force of Earth. So the work of me, even though I'm setting it down, I'm kind of applying an upward force. Otherwise, it just falls straight down. So the work of me is negative. That's me on the object. The work of Earth, the object is moving down, and Earth's force of gravity is down. So that work is positive. While we're still at the gym, in this case we're in Seattle, the pesto of cities, we're going to look at power this time. Now, when you're in the gym, it can be intimidating because you see some really bulk people. Sorry for intimidating you. Uh, but when you're in the gym, uh, if you ever hear of power lifters, those are people that lift really heavy weights as quickly as possible. In this case, they're kind of doing like power working out. So all power is, is the rates or how fast or how slow you do your work. So it's the time in which work is being done. So power is the amount of work <clears throat> divided by the time interval. Oops. Divided by the time interval. Oh my gosh. Okay. Divided by the time interval. at which the work is being done. So if we were to write that as a formula, we'd start off with power, which is P, is equal to work over time. We could expand this formula. We know work is force times distance. So power is also equal to force times displacement, sorry. Displacement over time. And if we go way back to the beginning of the year, displacement over time is equal to velocity. Very good. So power is also equal to force times velocity. One giant formula. Units of power is a joule, which is work, units of work divided by a second, and we simplify that to a watt, W-A-T-T, -T, which is capital W. I'm sorry, what did you ask? Oh, uh, it is a scalar as well. So power is a scalar. And finally, if you ever have, hear people brag about how much horsepower their cars have, what they're really talking about is how much energy does their power deliver in a given amount of time. So we could say one Harry Potter, oh, sorry, I mean one horsepower, is equal to 0 0.75 watts. So we have a new conversion factor there. And that's it for work and power. So let's do a few examples of each one. And then we'll move on to the next lesson. All right, so let's look, look at this example of work. Suppose you are pushing a car with a force of 125 newtons at an angle of 25 degrees for a distance of 10 meters. How much work do you do in the x direction and how much work do you do in the y direction? So let's draw our x, y axis really quick. And when you're pushing this car, you're kind of pushing downwards. So here's the force you're pushing it with, 125 newtons. And your angle theta is 25 degrees. And we've got work in the, or a force, sorry, in the x direction. So 
we got fx and a force in the y direction. It's going to be downwards, fy. And we want to figure out how much work you do in the x direction and in the y direction. So we've got our vectors. Let's start with our formula. Work. Let's do the x direction first. Work is equal to force times distance. In this case, we're looking at force in the x direction. X is opposite the theta, so work or the angle is equal to F D cosine of theta. So now let's plug and chug. Work is equal to 125 newtons times 10 meters times the cosine of 25 degrees. And we get the work to be 1,132 joules. Let's convert that to kilojoules, because that's often what we see in our units, because we have such high numbers with work. So let's make our parentheses. We know one kilojoule, kilojoule, sorry, over, look in our reference table, it's equal to one times 10 to the three joules. And we get for our final answer in the x direction, 1.13 times 10 to the, or sorry, 1.13 kJ, kilojoules. Okay, now let's look at the y direction. When you're pushing your car to the right, is your car moving downwards at all? No, it's not. So it doesn't move a distance in the y direction, so the work is zero. Okay, last problem for the day. Mr. Tibbetts lifts a 1,000 kilogram object, with ease, to a height of 0 0.5 meters in three seconds. How powerful am I? Let's label our knowns first. We've got mass is 1,000 kilograms. The height is a distance, or displacement, which is 0 0.5 meters, and the time is 3 seconds. And we're finding power. So we know power is equal to work over time, which is equal to force times displacement over time, which is equal to force times velocity. And one we're going to look at is force times displacement over time. Since I'm lifting it, I'm doing it against the force of gravity. And it doesn't say in the problem, but we're assuming I'm lifting it at a constant velocity. So power, Fg remembers mg, so m, g, d, all over t. And now we just plug and chug. Power is equal to 1,000 kilograms kg times 9.81 meters per second squared times 0 0.5 meters all over 3 seconds. And we get power is equal to 1,635 watts. Sorry for a long video, but we got two topics in one, and I'll see you next time. See ya.